You know, I'm going to be honest. I've never understood test corrections because if I didn't know it during the test, what makes you think that I know it now? Thank you for your time. Let me drop some facts about knowing your worth real quick. So I was texting this girl yesterday and she got mad because I wasn't responding to her. And so she says to me, I feel bad for whoever's going to be your girlfriend. You see, what you failed to realize is you haven't even piqued my interest yet. You haven't shown me any mental capacity to hold intellectual conversations. You haven't taken an interest in me past what I've achieved. You don't see me for what I am. You see me for what I can become. And you want to be a part of that. And the best way I can put it, you're predictable. Your actions speak so loud that I don't even have to listen to your words. Girls always want you to apply pressure and trust me, I get it. But I don't see a need to apply pressure where there's no substance. And I'm sorry, shorty, but I'm not like everybody else. You gotta apply pressure to me too. Cause I know what I got to offer and I'm not here to waste time. And if you can't even get me interested in a conversation, what you mean apply pressure? You apply pressure, I'm the one that's bored. Yeah, I'm picky, but that's because I would know how to treat my girl and make her happy. And I'm working on myself, so I deserve somebody else who's also working on themselves. So to the shorty who's on my line mad because I'm not responding, I'm sorry. But I knew this wasn't going to work from the moment you never held my interest. Thank you for your time. If you play this game right here, if you play Call of Duty, you need to hear this. I just think that I should let you know that if I could fight some of y'all, I promise you I would. Because I get so, so frustrated about this game sometimes. And it's funny to me because girls don't understand. They don't understand our frustration with the game. I get mad because you don't know frustration until you've stared at a door with your gun for 15 seconds, making sure nobody will come. And then as soon as you turn this way, you get shot four times in your back and you're dead. Like, what are the chances that you come as soon as I look away and it happens every time? And I'm going to say this one time for all the gamers out there. If you run around with an M4, an MP5, or a growl and get a bunch of kills and think that you're good, you're misleading yourself. Because running around with an overpowered gun doesn't mean you're proving yourself. It just means you suck. And yes, I'm frustrated. I lost the last couple of games I played. Thank you for your time. Shorty got mad at me talking about something. Why you ain't text me back? Because I was tired of lying, yo. Like, yo, every, every day you be posting on your snap talking about some, I'm a snack. I can't keep sliding up on that lion. What, what are you, crackers? Because cause you ain't no honey bun. You're not chocolate. If you're a guy and you want to get a little bigger, like you want a better workout routine, watch the rest of this video. Because I just came up with the easiest way to get bigger. I know a lot of us guys have problems with girls on TikTok, and that's okay, because this method works whether you're in a relationship or if you're single. And so the way this method works is every time a girl frustrates you, you got to do 20 or something. So for instance, oh, you wanted to leave me all right? 20 push-ups. Oh, so you thought it was cool to text me first, and then when I texted you back, you ain't want to respond? Yeah, fellas, we got crunches. You shot, 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 and airballed? So you get the gist of it. The more they piss you off, the more you work out. But see, the counterintuitive part to it is that they're going to keep pissing you off and you're going to keep working out. And eventually, you're going to start getting bigger. And what's going to happen is more girls are going to start wanting you. And the thing about this routine is the more you get curved, the more it works. It's proven to work, fellas. Thank you for your time. Nobody likes being restricted, but there are a couple things that are coming out of these restrictions that nobody's talking about. So for instance, where I live, you're required to wear a mask as soon as you step out the house, pretty much. But see, one thing y'all aren't thinking about when you put on those masks is you forgot about that one person whose breath you used to have to smell all the time. And it was kicking every time. And see, what I love about this is the fact that they have to deal with it now because you're breathing in your own breath. And I may be a bad person for saying it, but you deserve it because you used to walk around, hey, how's everybody doing? And these are the same people that really used to piss me off because I'd have gum and I'd be like, you, you want a piece of gum? And I'd put one in just because I don't want to make it seem like you have bad breath. So I'll put in a piece of gum and I'll be like, hey, you, you want a piece of gum? And then they have the nerve to say no. You need it. Thank you for your time.
I'm making this video real quick because I just walked downstairs and got shushed violently and I wasn't even doing anything. And it was because my mother was on a Zoom call, but I wasn't even making any noise. And y'all might think I'm exaggerating, but for real, I was in the kitchen, like, slowly pulling the drawer out the fridge, trying to get that Capri Sun. And I finally grab it, and my mom is like, shh. And why am I saying anything about this? Because it goes back to that double standard that I talked about a while ago. Because when they're busy, I'm walking around the house, tiptoeing. I'm closing cabinets real slow. I'm walking down the steps a certain way because I don't want them to make no noise. But when I'm doing something, I never see that energy come from them. Because I can be working on something that is extremely important to me. And my mom is like, hmm, this is the perfect time to vacuum. She on the phone, got the TV turned up to level 45, and all I'm saying is give me the same respect that I already give you. Thank you for your time. We'll be asking the questions, old man. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Are you deaf? No, you is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. That is what I just said. You just said what? I did not say what. I said you. That's what I'm asking you. And you is answering. Shut up. You. Yes? Not you, him. What's your name? Me. Yes, you. I am me. He's me. And I'm you. And I'm about to whoop your old ass, man, because I'm sick of playing games. You, me, everybody's ass. So I'm going to let you guys watch this video real quick, and then after you watch it, I'll explain what really happened. You know, nobody likes being restricted. We good, though. So pretty much what happened was I was trying to record a video and my phone started to tip over while it was on the tripod. And so like any normal person, I tried to grab the tripod while my phone was falling. Well, I must have grabbed that tripod with some kind of Hulk force. Because my phone flies out of the tripod, it hits the TV, hits the counter, and then it slams on the floor. But I go and look at it and it's not cracked, so I'm like, oh, we must be good. And so later that day, I go out with some friends, I come back, it's mad late, and I'm like, you know what, let me watch some Netflix before I go to sleep. And, well, uh... And you would think I'm smart, so I bought a warranty, but I didn't. Thank you for your time. More things parents do that I hate. You ever be chilling in your room, you know, doing your thing, and your mom be like, Ayo, hey, Xavier. And you respond, you be like, yeah, what's up? And she be like... Did you call me? And then you get up mad as hell because you don't know what they want, but you know you gotta go there. And you ask her, you know, you be like, what is it that you need? And she be like, um, can you pass me the remote control? Next thing, you ever just be chilling and your mom or your dad walk in the room and they be like, hey, yo, clean your room because we got company coming over for dinner. It is dinner being held in my room? And lastly, I cannot stand when parents just say no for no reason. And it's funny because you be trying to ask the questions all nice. You be like, hey, mom, um, is it okay if I... No. And you know she's saying no for no reason, so you be like, why can't I go? Because I said so. Like, thank you for your time. If you're a guy and you like going to the beach and you like going swimming, you need to hear this. So me and my family went on vacation and we were going swimming and we got to the pool and I had on my trunks and my underwear under my trunks. And my mom saw me and she was like, you know you're not supposed to wear underwear under your trunks, right? I had to tell her right there, yo, until you grow one of these, you can't tell me what to do. Especially not with trunks, yo, because that netting that they put in trunks is the most uncomfortable thing on this planet. And I'm gonna be real with you, I don't even know what it's there for because it's not protecting me. It's not making me feel comfortable. If anything, it's doing the opposite. There is no way that you can convince me that a man made trunks. Because there is no way that a man in his right mind would put on trunks and say, hmm, these are comfortable. And then it's like the netting gets stuck, so you gotta walk around always like, like trying to fix it, but it don't work, so you just... <sighs> Thank you for your time. You wanna know how the school system is failing us? I can prove it to you right now. So during my time in high school, I took four years in Spanish classes. And there are 185 days in the school year, which means I took Spanish for 740 days. So you would think that when it comes to the Spanish language, I'm pretty well equipped to get myself out of situations and predicaments. 
So after approximately 740 days of me repetitiously relearning, hola, como estas? Me llamo es Xavier. Let me tell you how I got myself out of a situation. So me and my family went on vacation, and after a certain amount of time, our room card stopped working because they didn't process our late checkout. And so I'm taking the trash out before we leave, and I take it to the trash chute, but the door won't open because the cards aren't working. And so I see a maid down the hall, and I'm like, okay, let me go ask her for help. And as soon as I get there, she's like, me no habla inglés. And instead of responding with a logical Spanish response, I just sat there like, door, open, uh, uh, key, card. Just sat there looking stupid. Thank you for your time. Story time with Xavier. So a long time ago when I was in about 7th or 8th grade, me and my dad were watching a movie together. And you know, we had just finished eating, we were just chilling, and so out of nowhere, I hear my dad start making this sound. And it was like a candy wrapper sound, you know what I'm saying? Like that... And don't get me wrong, I wanted something sweet, but not enough for me to say something, you know? So I just let him eat it. I'm like, you know what, I don't even care what it is, you got it. But the problem is, is that I start hearing it again, like I hear a second one. And I'm like, okay, you didn't, you didn't even offer me any of the first one, which is fine. But now you got a second one. And so I'm like, yo, dad, let me get some of that. He's like, nah. And even at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm not chipping. It's fine. But then I hear another one. So at this point, I look over and I'm like, yo, that's your third chocolate Twinkie. I'm your son. You're supposed to sustain me. When are you going to ask me if I want one? And so now I get up. I'm like, yo, if you don't let me have some of that chocolate Twinkie, I'm not going to have none and you're not going to have none either. Stay tuned and come back for part two. And as always, thank you for your time. One thing I used to hate is how parents always undermine our problems with their stories from childhood. For instance, I bet most of y'all know somebody who used to always say, man, I remember we used to have to walk about five miles to get to school every day, bro. You remember the hill, bro? You remember the hill, man? I'm telling you, man. And I'm sitting here like, yo, all I said was I didn't want to ride the bus. But you know what? I'm not even going to knock the game no more. You want to know why? Because whenever my kids have a problem, I know for a fact I'm going to pull out the quarantine card. I told you, get, get, get. Till you sit through a quarantine for five months, I don't want to hear nothing. And look, I don't know how quarantine was for y'all, but it wasn't that bad for me. You know what I'm saying? But I know that I'm a gas it when I talk about it. Like, yo, I couldn't see my boys. I ain't have no girls. I couldn't even go on a walk in my neighborhood. And you over here mad because I can't let you go outside and play. It's ungrateful children. Thank you for your time. Story time continued with Xavier. So me and my pops, we get in the car, I got my pizza, I got my bag, I'm ready. And so like I said, I got a big piece and a little piece, but the big piece looks so good. I gotta save it for last, you know what I'm saying? So I start out with the small piece. And I'll never forget, we were driving down this road and it was a little muggy outside, so my dad, he let the windows down. And so you know, we just in the car, we chilling, and so my dad, I see him start looking over to the side. And so it strikes my attention, I'm looking, and so he keeps looking, he's like, yo, what do they got going on over there? And so you know me, Curious Xavier, I gotta look, so I'm like, you know what, what do they got going on over there? And as soon as I look, I could feel the weight on my hand leave, like it wasn't there no more. I look over at my pops, he's already crying, laughing with my pizza in his hand, about to throw it out the window. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And he's like, yes, 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 yes. My pops was wheezing, crying, laughing. I mean, he was laughing so hard, he almost passed out, and we had to pull the car over. I can't never win. Thank you for your time. First things first, I know I need to work on forgiveness, okay? That's something we'll get to on another day. But I like to hold grudges, okay? And that might be a Libra thing. Maybe I'm just tripping. But I'm always chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm always just chilling. So I feel like if you can get me to the point where I feel like I need to hold the grudge on you, oh yeah, I'ma hold it. And I'ma hold it good. Oh yeah, I'ma hold that for a minute. Because it takes so much to get on my bad side. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not an easy task. But if you can successfully cross that bridge, <laughs> it's burnt, <laughs> it's scorched. <laughs> so to everybody here, I hope you have a great day. I hope your day is full of positivity and growth. And for everybody on the other side of that bridge, you can kiss my Thank you for your time. Let me just get this off my chest real quick. If you play Call of Duty and you've ever killed me, I just need you to know that you didn't outplay me. It was just because I, I either need to change my class or, or, or I should have crouched. It was something I did, though. It wasn't something you did. Also, if you were one of the lucky few to get a PS5 this year, I just want to let you know, don't come over here talking about, oh, the PS5 controller's so nice, the, the console is so sleek, it's so slim. I don't want to hear none of that, because you was trash on PS4, and you still trash on PS5. 
And another thing, I don't know if y'all have ever played the game with a shorty around or on the phone or something like that, but nothing pisses me off more than when they are not supportive. Like, me dying in the video game is not a cue for you to laugh. Cause you know what it's like? It's like you spending five hours doing your makeup and you come outside and I look at you and go, that eyeliner though. You would be hurt, mad hurt. Thank you for your time. Story time continued with Xavier. So I get up and I walk over to my dad and I'm like, okay, yeah, let me get some of that chocolate Twinkie. And he's like, nah, and I'm like, okay. Bam, slapped it right out of his hand. Tell me why this man catches the chocolate Twinkie in between his thumb and his pinky. I was so amazed, I said, you know what, you can have it, I don't even care no more. But see, the way things work in my house, we don't drop things. We don't get mad, we get revenge. And so my pops is like, alright, I'm gonna get you back. And I'm like, what you mean? You already eaten it. He's like, nah, but you still slapped it though, so I got you. So listen, usually when we say we're gonna prank each other in the house, we wait about two, three weeks. Like, we wait until you forget. So sure enough, the next morning, I'm getting ready for school. So usually in the morning, I don't really eat like that because I don't really get hungry. But this morning was different. We had that hungry Howie's pizza with the ranch crust on it. And I had put it in the oven. It was in there for the perfect time. Had like the perfect crust on it. And so I didn't have enough time to eat it at the house. So we had to eat it on the way to school. Come back for part three. And as always, thank you for your time.